Okay, guys, so we're moving now on to question four, which is the last question of this paper. It's again, it's a bit of map reading, but this is a slightly different map to what we used to. Okay, so it says during February 2017, tropical storm Deneo caused damage to property in Mozambique, but it also brought much needed rain. Below is a chart issued by Meteo France, the French weather office, showing the projected path of the storm as well as it likely affected land areas. Okay, so we see that it is in February 2017 and the 14, 15, 16 and 17 are all different days in February and it's saying basically these readings are every 24 hours at 10 o'clock each day. Okay, so let's now see what the first question asks us. Okay, I know I say this a lot, but it says, what I often say is the scenario sometimes can be really complicated, but the questions sometimes help us understand it, right? So just look here, um, it's exactly what I said, just so that you understand where I got my explanation from. It says 1510 indicates the predicted position at 10 o'clock on the 15th of February. Okay, so they explain what that symbolism means. So it says Deneo was classified as a category one tropical storm with a maximum average wind speed of 95 miles per hour. They say 50 miles equals 80.4672 kilometers. Then it says convert, rounded off to two decimal places, the maximum average wind speed, two kilometers per hour. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, 50 miles equals 80.4672 kilometers. That's effectively a ratio. So let's just make it a little bit more simplified for ourselves and make it one mile, two kilometers. Okay, to a certain amount of kilometers. The, we, the way we do that is to say, okay, what did we have to do to that side to get to one mile? We divide it by 50. We do exactly the same on the other side, right? So test that on your calculator. Then we say, okay, but now we want to go to 95 miles. So we're going to times that side by 25. And we're going to times this side, not 25, 95, sorry. And we're going to multiply that side by 95. So we say 1.609344 times by 95. So we get 152.89 kilometers, right? But remember that it wanted it as kilometers per hour. So this is actually, right, our answer is then 152.89 kilometers per hour. Okay, because we know that it said 95 miles per hour, right? So it's that many kilometers per hour and that's our final answer. Okay, I'm smudging my ink everywhere here. Okie dokes. Let's now, also, we did it to two decimal places, which it asked us to do. That's important, right? Always write it in the form that they ask. Then 4.1.2 says, the distance between two vertical grid lines on the map is approximately this many kilometers, okay? Then it says, calculate using the measured distance, the predicted average speed of the storm from point P to point Q, use the following formula, okay? So we're going to need our... Oh, sorry. We're going to need um, a highlighter and we're going to need a ruler. Okay. So firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the scale is. So it says that the distance between two vertical grid lines represents this um, distance in reality. So let's first measure the distance between two grid lines. Okay. Vertical grid lines means going this way. Okay. So I see that as 17, right? So let's just write here 17 millimeters equals 205.043 kilometers in reality, okay? Now, the distance between P and Q is 39 millimeters, okay? 39 millimeters, okay? That's what we have. So, let's firstly, right, let's firstly convert this into, let's make it one millimeter, and let's see how much one millimeter equals in kilometers. So what did we do to get from 17 to one? We divided by 17. So what are we gonna do on the other side? Divided by 17, okay. Right, you should be getting the hang of these ratios. So we see that 12 millimeters is zero, 12 point, I mean, sorry, one millimeter equals 12.06135294 kilometers, okay. Perfect. So now we want to say, okay, now if we have 39 kilometers, what's going to happen? So we've times that side by 39. So let's times the other side by 39. So take your um, kilometers that you have there, times that by 39, and we see that that is 
470.3927647 kilometers. Now, you could be saying, Margs, why are you not rounding this off? Well, the reason I'm rounding, not rounding it off is because that's not actually our final answer because it's asked for our predicted average speed, okay? So what we need to do is we found now, using, using this formula, we have the distance, right? We actually also have the time. You might not think we do, but we're going to solve for the average speed, which is what our final answer is, right? So remember this little um, triangle that I've drawn before, okay? We know that speed equals distance times time, right? Um, sorry, that's not right. It's <laughs> like this. It's distance at the top, sorry, speed times time. So now we want speed. So speed is going to equal distance over time, okay? So that's what we're going to put. So what we have is we have our distance, right? So we've got, we've just calculated our distance, right? That it's moving between these two points. And now let's think what our time is, right? So we, it's asked for our average, our average speed in kilometers per hour. So what is the time difference between P and Q? Well, we see that P is 10 o'clock on the 16th and Q is 10 o'clock on the 17th. So there's 24 hours between the two. So this is going to be 24 hours, right? So we have this distance and this is the number of hours. So the answer here is going to be in kilometers per hour. So take the distance that you had there, divide it by 24 and you'll get 19 0.5996. Let's round it off to two decimal places, right? And we get 19.60 kilometers per hour, okay? If you round it off over here, you would get a slightly different answer, okay? And that's all right. You'll get the marks either way, right? But it's always better not to round off until the end. Okay, so that would be your final answer there. It's a good question to practice. Just always remember this little triangle. Distance equals speed times time. And then you can get any other. You can get time. So you would say time equals distance over speed. Speed equals distance um, over time. And then distance equals speed times time. Okay, so those are just all the different ways that you can use this triangle. So it's an important one to remember. So that's your final answer. Let's now move on to the next question.